Hi, and welcome to The Farcast. I'm Alex Helmbrecht, and I'm joined here today, today by Daniel Binkert. And our guest is head women's volleyball coach Jennifer Stadler, who I, I think, if I'm doing my math correct, is just maybe in her sixth or seventh month at, at CSC. So she's That's certainly a new is. face. Uh, and for those of you who are listening, uh, a new voice. But hopefully we'll have a chance to get to know Jennifer a little bit better after this conversation um, Jennifer, so you, you coached and played at Black Hills State, but tell us a little bit more about yourself. Where'd you grow up? When did you kind of discover you had a passion for volleyball? Um, all those things that, that people who want to get to know you might ask. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, it's been so exciting, uh, being here at Shadron and, um, being able to speak with you guys is just Another exciting thing that I've got to do here. Um, I actually grew up in Colorado, a small town, well, in small town, I guess, considered in Colorado, um, kind of near Fort Collins, I guess. Um, and my brother actually played volleyball my whole life. And um, I didn't actually get into the sport until I was in eighth grade. Um, I was more of a softball player um, and just kind of got burnt out with softball. So I thought I'd try volleyball and kind of fell in love with it after that. Um, from my high school in Colorado, I actually went to a junior college before I went to Black Hills um, and played there in Cheyenne, L C For two years, it was actually the second year that the program had volleyball oh, wow. or the college had volleyball. So it was kind of a, it was a cool experience. We had a good team. Our coach was amazing. She's a lady that I still look up to and talk to often. Um, her and her husband were actually the coaches there and um, they were my club coaches in high school. So that's kind of how I got there. Um, and then after that, I actually took a year off of school and volleyball and couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do with my life. You know, one of those situations, I guess. And um, somehow came upon Black Hills. Um, and way I went and visited with my dad and just really loved Spearfish. It's a really pretty area. Um, fell in love with the coach and the program and um, just wanted to be a part of it and knew that I needed that back in my life. Um, and so luckily he was nice and took me on, um, and, uh, played there. And then, um, yeah, just kind of started help coaching after I graduated and then it been kind of a whirlwind since then, yeah. <laughs> and you got your master's degree at Black Hill State, right? Yeah, I did. So as soon as I was done coaching or um, playing, um, the head coach there asked me to help him because he knew that I just really loved the game. And um, so he said, you know, maybe, you know, would you maybe want to be a coach someday? And I, you know, I just graduated. I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I was working at a um, my degree is actually in sociology and human services, and I was working at a psychiatric treatment for juveniles in Spearfish, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I thought I wanted to do. Um, and so he was like, well, you should get your master's degree just in case because that's something that if you want to be a coach, you'll need. Mm -hmm. um, and so luckily he kind of pushed me that way or else – you know, I probably would have never pursued one. And so um, I got that right after I graduated, which now looking back is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What, what position did you play? Um, so high school, I was an outside. I, I'm not a very tall lady, um, but that was kind of back in the day. <laughs> um, uh, at my JUCO, I was a setter. And then at Black Hills, I was the libero. So I've kind of got to play uh, multiple positions, which I think definitely now um, has helped me a lot in my coaching career. Just knowing all those different positions, having played those, having had those experiences has helped me out a lot. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. That's great. So it's been six months. June 1st is when you started here at CSC yeah. uh, and then jumped right in. What's it been like these first six or seven months? Um, it's just been better than I anticipated, to be honest. Good. Um, you know, I... Um, was in Spearfish for eight years um, and then got the job at Sher Sheridan College um, in Sheridan, Wyoming, and I was there for eight years. And okay. so um, making this transition was probably one of the scariest, one of the scary decisions I've made in my life. And <laughs> um, and for my family, having now I'm married and have kids, it's kind of more of a decision for us and not just me. Right. Um, and so we... Um, you know, I was scared and didn't really know what to expect in this community and everybody here at the college is just so welcoming, so open, um, just honest and um, caring. I mean, that's kind of a big thing. And so 
really a lot of people reached out to me when I was here. Uh, my husband actually didn't move here till August and neither did okay. my kids. So I was kind of here for two months by myself and um, just people in the athletic department and the community just reached out right away and kind of just made me feel like I had been here already. Um, and that was just awesome to just get that right away so that I wasn't here and not in the unknown so long. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, once the girls got here, they, the team here for volleyball, I mean, I can't say enough about the team. They are the sweetest girls. They care about each other. They care about the program. They care about the college, but they just really welcomed me um, and my assistant coach and just want, they just want to be really good. And um, they want to, you know, have, they want to show their pride for the program and they want to show not only the community and the kids here, but also the RMAC and, yeah. uh, sorry, uh, volleyball in general that we're, you know, that we're a good program. And so um, they definitely were, I guess, just something that I did not expect them to be so open, you know, having a coaching change so late, but they were awesome. And um, getting to know them throughout these last few months has just been a blessing for sure. Excellent. Yeah. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> Well, and, and you certainly put together a, a very successful first season. I, I, I think it's, I remember seeing it was like the first winning season since 2003, which not yeah. dating ourselves, but we were, <laughs> yeah. we were in college in those, at those times. But um, what are, so congratulations on Thank that you. first and foremost, but what are some of your goals for the, for the program moving forward and, and trying to hope uh, to, to continue that success? Um, you know, we did have, you know, definitely some su success this year. A lot of it, you know, goes back to the the seniors that were here and the things that they sat down at the beginning of the year and said that they wanted to do for the program, that they wanted to go out and leave kind of their legacy here. Um, and so, you know, something that I, I feel like I talked about a lot with them is just being purposeful with our contacts and getting 1% better every day. Um, and that may not just be for volleyball skills, but that might be our communication, that might be our work ethic, that might be our intensity, something that we're just getting a little bit better at. So we concentrate on those small things so that the big things don't seem as big. Um, and so that's just kind of something that I think I want to keep moving forward. Um, I think if we can keep getting a little bit better every day, if we can bring in some athletes that buy into that, um, that want to see Shattern Volleyball be successful. Um, if the girls that are here continue to buy into it and trust the process um, and know that it takes one day at a time to, for us to be successful, I think we can continue to move forward. Um, and that's what, you know, I hope that we can con continue to do. I know that they're kind of still in that whirlwind with me where everything was so brand new. Um, I think all coaches, no matter what sport, you coach it differently. You have different ways you say things. And they really just took everything that I said and really just tried to implement it, which this spring is going to be really exciting because I'll actually get to break down a lot of those things that I was saying for the last, you know, four months that they may not have really um, knew the why or really could implement everything. So um, I know uh, myself, my co my assistant coach and the girls are excited to start really working on those things and really working on like um, my philosophies and the way we want to see shatter and volleyball continue to improve. Great. So in terms of building the program, maintaining the program, uh, do you have some benchmarks um, looking forward? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh I, you know, as far as like the team goes, um, the one benchmark that I kind of set out when I got the job is that we wanted to make the RMAC tournament. Um, and this year, unfortunately, we tied for eighth place. Uh, there's 16 teams in the conference. You have to make the top eight to make the RMAC tournament. And we tied for eighth and we lost in the tiebreaker. Basically, yeah. we lost to two teams in five sets with, of a total of five points. So we lost getting to the tournament. I see yeah. it as five points, which is a bummer yeah, <laughs> um, for sure yeah. that, you know, the seniors, I think that was probably the hardest thing is because that was probably their number one goal. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a, definitely something that we want to achieve next year because we are oh, yeah. so close. Um, and then just be like a perennial contender in the RMAC. You know, we don't want to be in the bottom half of the RMAC. We want to be up in the top eight every year and continuing to compete um, and just be something that not only this community can be proud of, uh, the college can be proud of, but also, you know, that the RMAC kind of fears us a little bit. That's something that I would like to see. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> Jennifer, what are some tasks that you have in addition to just coaching? I, I think people have a tendency to think, you know, I don't know if X's and O's is the right term for volleyball, but um, are there things throughout the course of your day that are that you do that are in addition to coaching? I mean, like you mentioned, there's probably a lot of mentorship, a lot of conversations with student athletes. What are some of those items that people may not know about? Um, yeah, you know, one of the things um, coming from a JUCO, I wore a lot of hats at Sheridan College. Um, and when I got here, I've kind of come to find out that it's I get to focus a little bit more on volleyball. Like at Sheridan, I was assistant athletic director and the fitness center director. So I didn't get to focus as much on volleyball there as I wanted to at times. Um, here, that's the nice thing. There's a lot more people to help you out, um, you know, but I still um, definitely mentoring the girls. I try to be there for them, not just volleyball wise. I mean, obviously, I want us to be successful on the court, but I want to make sure that they're when they graduate, that they are ready for the world and not just academically, but personally, you know, mentally, all of those ki kind of things. Um, when they're here, you know, some of these girls are really far away from home. And I want to make sure that they know I'm somebody that they can trust and um, that I'm here, that you know, that they can talk to and support them and not just, again, volleyball, but also any anything in their life. Um, you know, budgeting, you know, I have to help take care of our budget and make sure that, you know, we're not overspending in our travel or um, our operational type budget, um, scholarship budget, those type of things. Um, we put together all of our travel. So hotels, um, meals, um, buses, all of that type of stuff. Um, right now is probably the biggest thing right now in our off season is our recruiting, you know, bringing in new kids and um, it was definitely a bigger portion of my job out of junior college because you basically bring in a whole new team every year here. You know, it's going to be a less number like at Sheridan. I was bringing in 10 kids a year this year. Hopefully I won't have to bring in that many. Um, uh, but then, you know, also just academics, making sure that they stay up on their um, studying, making sure they're doing well in school, compliance. Um, anything that has to do with the NCAA rules, which there's a lot of those <laughs> that we have to sure, yes. abide by. Um, and I, and fundraising as well, you know, making sure that, um, we can bring in some stuff to help our program, um, have the things that, you know, maybe we need or some wants that, um, we're not getting from the colleges like op operating or whatever type of our budget. So busy days for sure. Busy days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. So how would you explain volleyball to someone who has no idea what goes into it? Um, <laughs> I would say it's just kind of a more intense game of keeping the balloon off the floor. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit more complicated. Because we have um, some power equipment going on out there. We'll, <laughs> we'll see if we can get through it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think – Volleyball is a game that I think is a little bit more complicated than I think a lot of people know. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, there's certain people that can only play front row versus back row. Um, and I think just like I said, I mean, I, I think it's one of the most enjoyable sports to watch because there can be such intense moments. Um, momentum can shift and make a game change drastically. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think... You know, like I said, I mean, I think it's just really just I mean, obviously, it's just keeping the ball off the floor. But there's so many like little different parts that people don't realize. Um, it's a lot different than your backyard, I guess, volleyball that you do sure. on, at a barbecue. Um, but I, you know, and I'm probably just biased because I'm a volleyball coach, but I think it really is one of the very few team sports. Um, you cannot win a volleyball game with one person. I mean, we could have an all-American outside hitter. But she's not going to win the game for us if we yeah. can't pass the ball or if our setter can't set the ball. So, um, you know, I just think it's a game that everybody has to contribute. Um, and I think that's something when you ask any volleyball player why they love it. And they, a lot of it is because they say it's a team sport and yeah. you have to rely on your teammates to be to be successful, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah. When you mentioned uh, complex, uh, the aspect of volleyball that I always go back to is the libero tracking. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I had to, when I was the SID here, uh, there was a, a, a couple games where you you actually have to track the libero yep. um, for the NCAA, and 
it was the most confusing <laughs> hour and a half of my life. And I, I hope that uh, the NCAA never comes back and audits that that game so that they see, well, this Libero tracking was terrible. But um, it's tough. And, yeah. and I think uh, that it does move so fast. Um, it is fun to watch. But if you're really not paying attention to the ins and outs of it um, and just watching it at the surface level, it, it, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to it. I mean, um, when I play, like, pickup volleyball, like, uh, you know, I call it the old lady league, um, <laughs> you know, people are like, so there's, you know, because there's certain numbers for spots of serving that we give our athletes. Um, so there's certain zones on the court we want them to serve, and they have a number. Um, each set is called a different thing. Um, we have certain in our defense, every defense is called something. So it's, you know, I mean, I, to be honest, I, the last time I played basketball was in like fifth grade, but I remember we had plays. So it's kind of similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, I know nothing about basketball, so don't ask me any questions <laughs> about that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody has their own position. Everybody kind of has to stay there. Um, you can't overlap each other when you're, where you're standing on the court. Um, you can get violations for that. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of rules to volleyball that, that people, you know, obviously when they're in the stands and the ref calls and you hear a lot of like, what, why? It's because they just, they don't know why, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, because it is so complex and it's actually changed a ton. Um, when I played in high school, we didn't have a libero. Um, and so as, you know, and we didn't have rally scoring. We had yeah. side out scoring, which the games took forever. Yeah. Um, when I got to college, we still had only, um, we started rally scoring, but we played till 30. Um, and so I remember in college, we had a game that almost went to 40 points, which is just the longest game mm -hmm, ever. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, the game has definitely changed. A lot of it has to do with the international part of the sport. Um, whatever they change internationally, they eventually try to bring it down um, throughout, um, like the challenge system, which is something that we the RMAC started this year will be in to effect next year for every school, which is a really cool thing for coaches. Um, but that definitely started at the international level and now has, you know, trickled down. Um, they've talked about limiting subs even further um, eventually. So uh, we'll see, I guess, where the game ends up in the next few years. Yeah, I can remember looking back through media guides and, and historically just how much statistics have changed. Uh, it, back in sight out, you'd played a 15 or 25 or 30 and it, it's almost obsolete to compare those stats to what's going on now because yeah. they, they it's a completely different game. It really has yeah. changed mm -hmm. a lot. And the pace has just changed drastically. Yeah. I mean, it's so much faster um, than it was even when I played. It's crazy. Um, I don't know if that has to do with athletic talent or just the game in general, but um, it is a really fast-paced game for sure. Yeah, it's a fun game to watch. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got to give a plug then for CSC Live to oh, watch certainly. the game. So <laughs> viewers, head over to ShadronState.tv and uh, look up the volleyball archive from the last season. If you haven't seen the games already, take a look. There's some excellent stuff there. Uh, really, really fun to watch uh, from my perspective. Well, and it sounds like maybe we need to get the the commentators over to a volleyball practice or two, and they could oh, yeah, talk to Coach Stadler yeah. and get some background on that, <laughs> so they can start yelling out the different zones yeah. the ball goes to. Yeah. So, uh, you, you mentioned your coaches at um, Laramie County Community College as as mentors. Do you have other coaching mentors? Um, yeah, uh, Jet Albers, he's actually the AD now at Black Hill State. Yeah. He was my coach um, at BH, and um, he is just um, just a great man. He, um, besides my coach at L Triple C, he was another person that um, I kind of learned that as a coach, you have to be more than just the X's and O's because he really got to know his players um, personally. He really cared about us as people. Um, he still reaches out to me all the time. I mean, obviously now it's reciprocated relationship, mm -hmm. especially because I coached with him um, for a year when I had got done playing. And um, he just is, you know, somebody that can, I can always talk to about whether that's coaching volleyball or just life in general. Um, my athletic director, my first athletic director at Sheridan College, his name's Steve Smiley. He's actually a basketball coach um, at the University of Northern Colorado. He's assistant coach. Um, and he just really taught me more about like the administration side of athletics, 
um, just kind of helped me. Um, you know, when I was in a young coach, I worried about every little thing. And he would always tell me, quit majoring in minors, you know, quit worrying about all these little things and, you know, worry about the bigger picture. And so I think he really helped me grow um, as a not just as a person, but as a coach in my career. Um, and then also um, Angel Sharman, she's a coach at Casper College. Um, she was um, in our conference. Um, she's been there at Casper for, gosh, I want to say like 15 years um, she's become a really good friend of mine and she's just somebody that, again, I can look at for any advice. Um, and she's just, she's also, she's the AD there as well. So she's volleyball and AD. And so, um, just knowing somebody that can, you know, balance all of that and be successful in her career. Um, I just really look up to her advice and, you know, in our friendship for sure. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Uh, let's talk about recruiting a little bit. What do you look for in a recruit? And um, what's the process like? Uh, how enjoyable is that uh, as a part of the job? Um, you know, recruiting here definitely to bring kids to Shadron. Um, you know, first of all, is, you know, their character, are they going to fit in well with our team? Um, we could bring in anybody in here that's a really good athlete, but they don't, if they don't fit in well with the girls that are here, then it's never going to work. Yeah. Um, and so just somebody that can fit into our culture is, I think, number one. Um, and then obviously talent, um, you know, if sure. they can help us out on the court skill wise, um, can they help compete not just in our team, but also in the RMAC as well. Um, and then obviously somebody that's going to fit in with Shadron State and the community here, yeah. um, you know, what they're studying. Um, you know, if they're going to be a good role model, um, as an athlete here at Shadron, um, and then, uh, you know, recruiting, I think I, you know, I have a, I would say like a love hate relationship with recruiting. Yeah. I mean, I really like it. It's exciting to go out there, but it is probably one of the most stressful things. Um, I'm not, um, I would say probably the best at, um, Taking the, I always like, you know, when girls tell me that they don't want to come play for you, I always take it like personally, which probably isn't the best thing. I'm still working on that. Um, but, you know, that's kind of why I don't like it is because you, you know, you get, um, you know, negative feedback at times and nobody ever wants that. Um, yeah. But the love part is that you get to meet a lot of great kids and whether they say yes to your program or no to your program, you still get to get a glimpse into their life and, and what they want to be. And that's exciting. Oh, sure. and, and then when they come, you get to actually, you've developed this relationship with them. And then you, you know, here, that's the thing I'm really excited about is that Sheridan, I only got to coach them for two years. And so here getting to coach a kid for four years is one of the most exciting things because I get to actually see them grow and develop a little bit longer. Um, and so with recruiting here, you know, now I, I potentially get to know this person for five years instead of just, yeah like two and a half. So I'm really excited about, about building those relationships from the recruiting aspect and then through once they come to Shadron State. Absolutely. Yeah. Jennifer, when did you know you wanted to coach? Um, probably when uh, Jet at BH asked me to um, help him be a student assistant. Um, when I got done playing um, after my senior year in that spring, um, I asked him if I could just still come to practice because I knew that I just really loved the game. And then that year that I had taken off in between my two colleges, um, I missed it so much. I mean, I probably watched more volleyball that little break than I ever have in my life because I was I knew I was missing from my life. And so um, when he asked me to help and I was there at practice and I would also go to my other job, um, I knew that there would be no way that I could not have volleyball in my life. And so, um, you know, kind of stayed on and still helped him and um, coach that next year or that next season. And during that next season, um, I just really knew that that's probably something that I should be doing. Um, my dad always told me growing up that if you find a job that you love, it will never be work. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, right when I started doing it, I knew that's what I needed to do because that kind of always stuck in my head, um, you know, with my dad is that when he kept saying that. Um, and so um, and really, to be honest, like I am so blessed because 
volleyball is my hobby. It's something that I love. And so it never feels like work. I get excited still to come to work. I get excited to go to practice. Um, I love Christmas break because I get to spend time with my kids, which I don't get to see very much, but I actually hate it because I don't get to do volleyball. I don't get to practice. We don't get to, you know, see the girls. So um, it really is just my love. And that's kind of, you know, when I chose to pursue coaching is because I just knew I loved it and I had to be, I had to do something with it. And whether I didn't know what that was at the time, but luckily uh, Jet at BH was just a really good mentor and helped kind of push me in a good direction. Well, it certainly worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what advice do you have for people who would be interested in becoming a coach? Um, I just think, uh, you know, finding somebody that can help be your mentor and kind of steer you in a good direction. There's so many opportunities to be a coach and there's so many different levels. And I think finding your niche right away, um, like I know college is my niche and I yeah. know that I probably couldn't coach different levels just be, well, I don't know if it's because I've been only coaching college, but um, finding your niche, um, doing as much networking with other coaches as you can, learning as much as you can from other coaches. Um, you know, that's something that I've tried to continue to do is just be a constant learner of the game. Um, I yeah. still don't know everything about the game and I still want to know more. I'm kind of a volleyball nerd a little bit. Um, you know, watch as much as you can. Um, and I think too, just try to get involved as much. So if you're in high school and you know you want to be a coach, not only play, but maybe help out at some youth camps, maybe um, coach a youth team. And then as you get into college, continue to do those things. So you build your resume, but you also learn how to um, relate back to the players that you're coaching. Um, you know, those first few years when I was coaching, that was something I had to learn is how to, you know, I knew the game, yeah. but I didn't understand as much as how important it was to relate to every individual on your team um, because every kid's different you can't coach them all the same Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know I think if I would have maybe done a little bit more learning about that focused on that when I was younger I think that would have helped me earlier in my career as a coach for sure okay yeah great so you, you're lucky. You're one of the chosen ones that, that your job is also your hobby and your volleyball. <laughs> um, but what are some of your other interests? Oh, my husband would say just volleyball. <laughs> um, uh, you know, my family. Um, I, I have two little boys. I have a two-year-old and a seven-year-old. And so when I'm not at volleyball, I just want to spend as much time with them as possible. Um, I, my mom is from 10, she has, she has 10 siblings. Um, so I think, you know, anytime I can get around my cousins, um, there's I think it's like 60 of us. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So anytime I can get around them, um, I would say that's, you know, definitely something, um, you know, my husband loves to go camping. Um, and so I go with him. Um, you know, I like to sit in the camper. I don't necessarily like to do the camping part, but I do like to go with him. Um, and then, you know, traveling when we can, which is, which isn't very much, but, um, we do like to go places like during the summer. I really like the beach, but so we try to go there, especially Nothing with the with boys. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the perks of being in the RMAC is you get to see, yeah. you get to go to some pretty beautiful places. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think just coaching in general, like uh, during Christmas break, there's a coaches conference um, around the final four. So ever since I became a college coach, I've got to go to this coaching conference and got to go to the final four, which is just such a great experience. But this year is in Pittsburgh. Um, and I probably would have never went to Pittsburgh mm-hmm. if I wouldn't have done that. So that was pretty cool. Um, I wish I would have known I was so close to New York City or done a little bit more research because I probably would have tried to go there yeah. just because I was so close. But yeah. Um, yeah, just trying to see different places, trying to experience new things for sure. Cool. Good. Well, we got some quick hitting questions for you to okay. end our little interview today. Uh, so whatever comes to mind for an answer, um, a favorite team of yours, regardless of the sport? Oh, gosh. Um I honestly don't watch a lot of sports besides volleyball, to be honest. Um, And we say a favorite, too, so you don't have to lock yourself into a specific, you know, just to, yeah. um, What's this year's favorite? (laughs) Well, it's, you know, I don't actually really want to say this because, you know, now that I live in Nebraska, I feel like I have to say Nebraska volleyball. But I've always been a huge Wisconsin volleyball fan um, because the coach there is, I just think, 
an exceptional coach and I just really think that he does a really good job with this program so I would probably I guess have to say Wisconsin volleyball hopefully I don't get any backlash <laughs> I, would hope not. I do no, love Nebraska sure. volleyball as well but if I had to pick a favorite that would probably be it good enough <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't think you're. It's as bad as Nebraska football. Like okay. if you said you didn't like Nebraska football, and people might be at your house. Okay. But I, I don't think it's like that here. <laughs> what about a favorite movie? Um. Well, my favorite movie actually is the 1981 version of Arthur with Dudley Moore. I don't know if you guys ever. You know, I've heard of that. I, I still need to see it. Um. So now that I say Arthur, everybody always thinks it's the new version with I think his name's like Russell Brand or something. Okay. The actor. Mm -hmm. I've actually never seen it, but yeah, it's a classic. Or uh, I, it's a tie because my other favorite is History of the World Part One oh, with Mel yes. Brooks. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is a classic. Yeah, that's yeah, a great I'm one. Yeah, I'm kind of an old like older time movie yeah. you know those movies i think are just hilarious so no there's some excellent stuff i'm yeah. trying to think now are there any uh, uh classic volleyball movies because i always think like hoosiers uh, for basketball oh, yeah i think the i What's mean the, the only one that anybody ever talks about is top gun when they're playing on the beach oh, she's so, awesome. yeah but i don't there honestly <laughs> isn't i don't think like a there's a new volleyball movie that came out um i Gosh, I can't remember. Maybe a couple years ago. And it's about a girl. Um, I believe it was in Utah. Um, her, her, she, uh, passed away during her volleyball season and the, oh, wow. um, team rallied and ended up winning state. And so the movie's about her life. Um, and it's actually a really good movie. Um, so I think that's probably the only like act where it's actual volleyball right. that I can think of. Um, the, the team rallied. I see what you yeah. did there with yeah. that verb. <laughs> 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 that's a good point though, Daniel. I mean, yeah, we got I wouldn't these... consider Top Gun a sports movie. No, no. that's a that's a flying movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there needs to be a, yeah because there's football movies, there's oh, we've got bowling movies, movies. Yeah. and there's some amazing coaches like Russ Rose at Penn State. He's been there for forty years, um, and he has I think the winningest coaching record. And there's not like anything about like somebody like him. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, which is just there's a crazy. gap here. Yeah, there they is. They won four national championships in a row, so there should wow. be a movie about that. I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty wild. Yeah, Hollywood, get on that. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. First concert you attended? Uh, George Strait. All right. Yeah, I think I was like seven. That's a yeah. pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've only been here uh, just a handful of months, but how many times have you been to the top of Sea Hill? I actually have not gone up there. I always, like, when it was nice out, I was like, okay, I'm going to go out and do that. And then I felt like I just hadn't. So it's definitely on my list. I'm not sure right now because of the weather. Oh, yeah, it's get warm chilly, up. Yeah, but let it warm up. Yeah, I definitely want to go up there for sure. And haul the kids up. It's good for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, make, I was going to say, make your team run up there for, I don't know, discipline we did do, or something. We did do the, the cheer team poster in, was it 07, I think, with uh, the, the couple of good girls running up and down the hill. And oh, really? Did a photo of that for the poster. I know the girls will go up there because I always see them have, like, pictures yeah. and stuff but i personally and i was telling my husband like we need to go up there and he's like okay yeah and then we just hadn't yeah <laughs> you got time too so yeah. like said, you gotta warm up it's not going anywhere it'll stay <laughs> oh is that me okay what is the word that comes to your head when you think of shadron state um probably community um and then probably pride um, I just think it's really cool that, you know, I, I kind of assumed when I moved to a, a small town, um, that people would be excited about the sports here, but I did not expect it to be yeah. as much as it is. And I just think it's so cool that when you're driving around town, you see Shatter and State flags in people's yards. I mean, you definitely see Nebraska, you know, but you see the Shatter and, you know, people, you know, want not just obviously sports, but, you know, they appreciate the college and they're excited that the college is here. And um, I think a lot of people have, like I said, pride for the college that's here just in general. Um, yeah. I, you know, I haven't been here very long, but anybody I ever talked to about just here, whether they work here or in the community, they just always talk well and good things about it. So um, it makes me be excited, even more excited to be here for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here and um, hopefully wish you a bunch of success in the future. And uh, we'll be certainly be among the fans in the fall when, when volleyball resumes. And um, 
Best wishes to you, Jennifer, and thanks again. Awesome. Yeah, thank well, you. thank you guys so much for having me. I had a great time. Thanks.